Hello and welcome to Maths and Maths. We're doing the Higher Maths GCC Paper 1, the non-calculated paper from November 2023. Doing a full walkthrough in two videos. Starting with question number one. It says work out 6.3 times 2.4. I'm going to multiply them both by 10 and do 63 times 24. And I'll remember to divide by 10 at the end. 4 times 3 is 12, carry that 1. 6 times 4 is 24 plus that 1. 2, 5, 2, put the 0. 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12. So then I have 2, 11, carry that 1, 5, bring that 1 down. I multiply them both by 10, so I need to now divide by 100, as in remove the decimal points and put the decimal points back in. 15.12. One key thing to do when you do a question like this is to see, does it make sense? About six times about two, I should get a number bigger than 12, uh, not quite 18. Okay, that's a three mark question. Let's move on to question two. Write down the value of five to the zero. Remember, anything to the zero is simply one. Five to the minus two, it's an uh, negative power, we can do the reciprocal, and because they want to see the value of it, we must do 5 squared, 1 over 25. They're each worth one mark. Right, some more index laws here. 2 to the 5 times 2 to the 4 over 2 cubed. When you multiply the bases, add the powers. 2 to the 9 over 2 to the 3. When you divide the bases, you subtract the powers. 2 to the 9 minus 3 is 6. So 2 to the 6 there. And that's worth 4 marks for index laws there. Let's move on to question 3 now. Writing 156 as a product of its prime factors. I like to use the prime factor tree here. Divide by 2. It's even. So 156 divided by 2 is 78, so I write 78 there, divide by 2 again, circle that because it's prime, 78 divided by 2 is uh, 39, can't divide by 2 anymore, but it is divisible by 3, circle that, 39 divided by 3 is 13, that's prime, so I circle it, so I can write 156 equal to 2 squared times 3 times 13, worth 2 marks there. Right, find the highest common factor of 156 and 130. We have 156 there, so if you want to use Venn diagrams or factor trees, I like to use the table method. They're both divisible by 2. 156, we saw earlier, was 78 and 130 would be 65. I can now divide that by, if I go through my 13 times table, I know that a pack of cards is 52 and one more 13 is 65. That's divisible by 13. I'm going to stop there uh, because I know I'm going to get a prime there. So the highest common factor is the product of those two numbers. So the highest common factor is 2 times 13, which is 26. Four marks for those two questions. Let's move on to question four now. The mean length of five sticks is 4.2. So I know that the total is five times 4.2. Now, I'll measure the length of one of the six as seven centimeters. Work out the mean length of the other four. So I know that if I sum those five and divide by five, I'm going to get five times 4.2, which is 20 plus that one, 21 in total. Um, sorry, so that'll be 21 is the sum and the mean is that 21 over 5. But now if one of them is 7, I must take away 7 from that, leaving me 14. So now I've got 14 divided by 4. 
which would be anode uh, 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. So the mean length of those four is 3.5 because we had 7 plus some number over 5 equaling 4.2 and that's what we had to uh, solve for that number there. We'd have to divide by 4. Okay, um, now we find out that Nawal has made a mistake. The stick was not 7. It was in fact 17. So when we take away from 21, uh, we have to take away 17. We're left with only 4. So the average of 4 is lower because they say, how does this affect your answer? So we're not doing 14 divided by 4, we're only doing 4 divided by 4. It's lower, it's, it's 1. That's just worth one mark. Okay, let's move on to question 5. This is a construction question. We have the point P lying on the line AB, and we use a ruler and compasses to construct an angle of 90 degrees. So we want a perpendicular uh, line. So I have my compass here. Um, I could set up a ruler, but... If I just make a mark there and make an equidistant line there, now I'm going to move this compass to those points, make it the compass a little bit longer there, so that the arc above and below from both sides make what I kind of see as palm trees. Um, so I just kind of fix this then. There we go. So we should have, you must have these construction marks. It says you must show all your construction lines. Now I would take a ruler and if I put a ruler from P up to that line there, you should use a pencil, but I'm using that one there. And it must go through that construction mark there and there, and we'll have it as 90 degrees. And uh, if you've got your protractor with you, you can check that. And if you've done everything correctly, it should be. 90 degrees. Okay, so that's a bit of construction, a nice two mark question. Let's move on to question six. It's a triangles and angles question. The diagram shows an isosceles triangle ABD and the straight line ABC. BA equals BD, so we know that's an isosceles triangle. I'll just write in that's probably X as well. That is X as well. Now they tell us that X to Y is two to one. So this is double that, that's twice that. And that'll be also another two. So work out the value of y. Well, let's look at this triangle ABD. We know the sum total is 180 degrees, but we now know it's made up of uh, a two, a two and a one uh, of some value. Uh, I'll put that uh, x in there. So if I want to do 180 divided by Five, that'll give me uh, actually the value of y. Sorry, I got that the wrong way around. So if I do 180 divided by 5, I put in uh, 3 there. So y is going to be 36. So that's 36, that's 72, that's 72. 144 plus 36 makes up 180. If you use the exterior angle, uh, of a triangle equal to the sum of the interior opposite. W is then going to equal 72 plus 72. Or you could use angles on a straight line. And they add up to 180. So you could say 180 minus 36 is 144. And that then is your angle W. So W is 144. A few marks in that question. Four marks there. Right, let's move on to question seven. Now, seven says there are x books in A, 3x plus 1 in B, 2x minus 5 in C, and there's a total of 44. So we've got a nice equation we can set up there. All the books have the same mass. The books on shelf B have a total mass of 7,500 grams. And we're going to work out the total mass of the books on shelf A. Let's start with this equation here to work out how many books uh, is X, and which is then A. So A plus B plus C is 44. That's four, five, six X 
uh, minus 4 is 44, adding 4 to both sides, dividing by 6, I get x equals 8. So that's what x is, that's the number of books on A. And now I want to know what the mass is. Um, we can take this equation here, 3x plus 1 equals 2, uh, 7500. Zero, zero. We now know what x is. Uh, 3 times 8 plus 1 is 7,500 grams. So I know that 25, um, so I should have done a mass there, a mass of a book there. That's the number of books. Uh, 25M is 7,500. So M equals 7,500 divided by 25, which, um, if I know that they're 4 in 100, and there's 75 hundreds there, we're going to get um, 300. So the mass for each book is 300 grams. And then for A's, to answer the question, total mass of the books on shelf A, we do 300 times 8, we get 2,400. Okay, so that's a lot of marks there, five marks worth spending some time on that question, setting up two equations and getting that question. Okay, uh, let's move on to question eight. The normal price of a mattress is reduced, reduced by 40%. The price of the mattress in the sale is 660. So I know that 0.6 of the original amount is 660. So work out the normal price. I need to do um, x equals 660 divided by 0 0.6. So now I've got to do uh, 660 divided by 6 tenths, which is then going to equal 660 times 10 over 6. Um, cancel those, and we get 110, 1,100. So 1,100 pounds. Now it should be more than that to make sure that, just do a quick check, is that more than that sale price? Um, to make sure that you've done the correct thing. Okay, uh, a couple more questions in this video before we uh, take a break um, and do the second half of the paper. Let's look at question nine, the number of cups of rice has a ratio to the number of cups of water of four to five. Uses information to draw a graph to show the relationship between the number of cups of rice and the number of cups of water needed to cook the rice. Number of cups of water is here, number of cups of rice is here. So rice at four, water is five. And says, uh, use information to draw that graph. Let's do another one. So at eight, it would be 10, take my ruler, uh, make sure they're in a straight line. You should be using a pencil, but I'm uh, cheating a bit here and just using my same pen. So I get that graph there. That should get me two marks. Then it says find the gradient of the line of this graph. Remember the gradient is y over x. So for every movement in the x direction of four, I've gone up by five, so m is five over four, or 1.25. Okay, now it says, explain what this gradient means. Uh, well, pretty much what they said at the start, um, for every four cups of rice, we need five cups of water. Four cups of rice need Five cups of water. I better test that with my own cooking. Okay, question 10 is a circle question. The circumference of a circle is 10 meters. And we know that's pi d. So then I know that if pi d equals 10 meters, then d equals 10 over pi. d is also 2r, so r will equal 5 over pi. They then say, work out the area of the circle. We know that area is 
pi r squared. So in this case, it is pi 5 over pi squared. So that's 20 pi times 25 over pi squared. One of those will cancel. Error is 25 over pi meters squared. And they said leave it in terms of pi. That's three marks there. Okay, let's move on to question 11. Alice recorded the number of cars going to a village on each of 80 days. Incomplete table and incomplete box plot give information about her results. Got the least number, 300, median, 900, range, 1,000, and then the actual box is here with the lower and upper quartile. So we have to use information in the table to complete the box plot and vice versa. Use information in the box plot to complete the table. So the least number is 300. So let's find 300 and draw that whisker there. The range is 1,000, so we'll go to 1,300 there. So I've put those two in, and the median is 900. That'll be there. So I've done that mark. The lower quartile we know is there. So that is 780. Upper quartile is there, is 1,200. So there you go, I've filled in information from there onto there and vice versa. On some of those days, Alice saw fewer than 1,200 cars going to the village. Work out an estimate for the number of days Alice saw fewer than 1,200. So we have 1,200 being the upper quartile, that's 75%. So I want three quarters or 75% of 80 days. So that's 1,200. Three quarters times 80 is 60. So I would say 60 days would be the estimate there. Okay, two more questions in this half of the paper. The straight line L has an equation 2y equal to 3x minus 7. Divide through by 2. Y equals 3 over 2x minus 7 over 2. So this m is 3 over 2. Remember, perpendicular gradient... Their product must be negative 1. Find an equation of the straight line perpendicular to L. So I know that M2 is going to be the negative reciprocal minus 2 thirds. So now I have some equation y equal to minus 2 thirds x plus c. I don't know what that c is yet. They've told us it must go through 6 and minus 5. So let's use some substitution. Minus 5 equals minus 2 times 6 over 3 plus c. I'm going to multiply through by 3 minus, actually no, I'm not going to do that because that can cancel. Uh, minus 5 equal to minus 4 plus c. c is going to equal minus 1. So my equation is y equal to minus 2 over 3x minus 1. So that is the perpendicular equation that's going through that point there. Okay, last uh, question for this video. Please do follow on onto the next video to watch the last uh, nearly 10 questions. A to B have a ratio of height, 2 to 5. So we know that uh, their area would be 2 squared to 5 squared. And their volume would be 2 cubed to 5 cubed. The volume of solid A is 12 cubic centimeters. So we've got to work out the volume of solid B. So what we need to do there is, sorry, that was 12 cubic centimeters. Divide 12 by 8 and multiply it by 125. So 12 divided by 8 times 125, that's 1.5. So we're going to do 1.5 times 125, which is going to be... <clears throat> 125 plus, what is, uh, dividing 125 by 2, because it's an uncalculated paper, 62.5 plus 62.5, so we're going to get 187.5, and that unit there is cubic centimeters written there for us. Okay, that's three marks there. Right, that's questions 1 to 13 of the November 2023 paper. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Do follow on to the next video and good luck for your exams.